Welcome to the Campaign Strategy section for my Dwarf Race Guide. This part will focus on campaign gameplay and strategy for the Dwarves, including starting out, later expansion, and the different sub-factions. Disclaimer. This guide is based on my personal experiences and opinions and is by no means a definitive way to play the Dwarves and Mall Empires. If you have a different strategy, or want to add something to mine, please leave a comment down below. Now if that's out of the way, let's get into the video. When playing as the Dwarves, you have the choice of three factions, and who you choose will make some big differences to how they play in both campaign and battle, but for now we'll focus on the campaign. The faction I played as for this guide is the Dwarf Realms, as they are the original Dwarves added back in Warhammer 1. They start out at Karazakarak, and are immediately at war with the Bloody Spears and the Greenskins. They do have a tough start, but if you play battles correctly and expand quickly, you can turn in your favour in a matter of turns. On turn 1, I took out the nearby Bloody Spears army, as well as taking the Pillars of Grungi. This gave me a good start for taking Mount Squighorn shortly after, and having a full province before turn 5, which gave me a massive head start. I then pushed south and began making friends with Zuthbar in the north, and turned him to attack the Bloody Spears from there to keep them from backdooring me. I continued pressing south and took two more settlements, Karakdron and Einrock. This left the Greenskin capital nearby to attack at a very early stage. I spent a few turns building up my armies and settlements before beginning to siege Black Crag and taking the Greenskin capital by turn 40. I spent the next 60 turns expanding south and confederating dwarf clans. This allowed my economy to grow very quickly and soon money was not an issue and my arms could be as big as I wanted with no upkeep constraints. I finally knocked out the last of the Greenskins on turn 99 and then was declared war on by the Vampire Counts. They didn't last long and were knocked out by turn 110. At this point my economy and military strength were so great that no one could touch me, and everyone wanted trade and alliances which I accepted. Doing so allowed me to designate targets across the entire map, and by turn 150 I had achieved the short victory, with a measly 11 losses in the whole campaign. While I didn't play the other sub-factions, they do look to play very similar to the Dwarf Realms with some minor differences that we covered more in the Lords and Heroes section. They obviously have different starting locations. Karak Kadrin starts at Karak Kadrin, and Clan Agron starts at Karakizor. The expansion options are also different for each faction. Dwarf Realms want to expand to the south, and leave the north for Zuthbar and Karak Kadrin, taking as much of the Badlands as they can. Karak Kadrin should expand north and then south after eliminating the Red Eyes. And finally, Clan Agrund, who should head south before heading east to take the Badlands. Overall, I'd say once you get past the initial push to get out of your spawn location, the Dwarf campaign quickly becomes very easy but there's lots of things about them that are unique and make them tons of fun to play as. They have lots of possible allies and the majority of them are nearby so it's great to make friends with them as soon as possible to get their support through trade and military alliances. Of course you can eventually confederate them all and have footholds in every part of the map which are extremely useful for later wars to clean up. The economic potential they have is near unrivaled thanks to the ability to make tier 4 resource depots which bring in more money and resources. They also start in a location that is very near to many of the resources you can get, so it can be making lots from trade from the start. This is also useful for the forge, which I'll come back to. Settlements do tend to grow slower than most factions, but this can be sped up through buildings as well as research. The research tree also improves a huge variety of things including economy, relations with other factions, recruit rank, capacity and time, upkeep, and unit stats. Your settlements are also very tough to take out, even with just the basic garrison, as long as you fight them manually, as the auto resolve does not favour you at all. Casualty replenishment is also slow, especially when you're outside of friendly territory and you can't use battle captives to replenish like most other factions. You can only ransom them for money or execute them for leadership. The Book of Grudges is something unique to the Dwarf factions. It basically keeps a record of any action done against you or your faction by others. For example, if an army raids your territory, you'll get a grudge to defeat that lord in battle. If you do this, you'll be rewarded with Oath Gold, which is a unique currency used for crafting, as well as a bonus to public order and plus 5 diplomatic relations with Dwarf Realms. If you have no active grudges, it is a great thing to always have these bonuses, but if you do have some and can't fix them quickly, it can cause major problems for you, so it can be a double-edged sword. The Forge is another thing that's unique to the Dwarves. It uses Oath Gold, as mentioned before, and trading resources that are being worked or traded to you. It uses these to craft items of varying strength to equip on your Lords and Heroes. These items range from common to near legendary unique items with a wide range of different effects. It's also worth noting that the trade resources are not consumed when crafting. Oath Gold can be generated a number of ways aside from the aforementioned grudge settling. Heroes can get skills to generate it per turn, a unique building in Galbraz can mine it, and all trade depot buildings earn you some per turn. 
Old Dwarf armies also get the ability to use the Underways, which allow them to cross rough terrain such as mountains in direct lines, which uses less turns but means you run the risk of being intercepted and having no escape if you cannot win the battle. This means that you will lose the entire army, so use this wisely. Throughout the campaign, as I made friends with several of the Dwarf Realms, I'd get given a choice between a faction-wide public order penalty or harming my relations with that realm. I always chose the realms as it recovered fast enough and didn't interfere with my alliances in the slightest. Since the Dwarves do inhabit settlements, they do have a choice of commandments. Empower the Guilds grants plus 30 growth and plus 5% faction-wide trade resource production. High King's Tribute increases tax rates by 5%. Masters of Steel and Stone decreases building cost and recruitment cost by 10% and adds one to the local recruitment capacity. And finally, Venerate the Ancestors grants plus 2 untainted and plus 2 public order in that province. Finally, we come to the climate preferences. The climate for the Dwarf Realms and Clan Agrund are the same. Wasteland, mountains and savannah are suitable. Frozen, temperate and desert are unpleasant. Ocean, chaotic wasteland, magical forest, jungle and island are uninhabitable. Karak Kadreen is slightly different with frozen being suitable and savannah and chaotic wasteland being unpleasant. That concludes this section of the guide on campaign strategy. The next section will cover the unit roster and how I believe each unit is best used so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to vote on the poll for the next race you want me to make a guide for, which is linked in the description and the comments. If you want to check out the other parts to this or any other guide, there's a link in the card and in the description for a playlist to the series. If you enjoyed this video at any point, please consider leaving a like as it really does help out a lot. And if you want to see more of this type of video, maybe click that subscribe button so you can stay up to date. After all, it is free. For now though, I was Colonel Dance, and I'll see you next turn. <laughs>